So this little video is for the purpose of helping as an instruction for those who might find it difficult to connect their batteries to the inverter. Uh, when you do, you've got to bear in mind that there are huge capacitors inside. Those who are techies will know what I'm talking about and probably can skip this, but those who are dabblers, beware. They're like a short circuit if they're discharged. And this display is actually showing what's happening inside the inverter. It's across the inverter leads. There's no battery connected and as you can see there's 0.14 volts registering which means nothing's there. They're completely discharged and they're huge. By comparison over here I've got my probe on the positive of the battery and over there on the negative and you can see there's a full 50 odd volts there, 49.8. Now to reconnect it you can see I've got the fuse lifted out. If I were to um, slap that fuse in there would possibly be a big arc because there'd be a huge inrush of current and it po possibly could even blow the fuse and we don't want to do that. So the method that I'm going to use involves a 240 volt bulb that I tested earlier um, and what we simply do is connect one end to our 50 volts. I'm trying to do this left-handed. There we go. So that's connected there. The other end is connected via this. And when I pop this on here, I'll probably blow the light. I don't know. But there we go. You can see on there, as I do that, because of the resistance of the globe, it's not actually lighting it. Oh, it is a little bit. There it is. And I'm bringing the voltage of the capacitors up slowly. Here we go. So this is the safe method of charging the capacitors in your inverter. And here we come. We're getting up close to... I'm just... my hand slipped off there. But that's all we're doing. And then once we've got this up at the same level, you'll see it's going to level out. It's that close that we can safely reapply the fuse without any risk of arcing. There we go, we're just about there. So that's quite safe, there's no heat involved, the current is minimal. As you can see the globe's no longer glowing but it's providing a resistance path for the current. That's the important thing, some resistance to slow the current down, maintain a low current charge of the battery. So now that's pretty much steady on f almost 50 volts according to that. I've still not calibrated it. So I can take this off, remove all this rubbish and safely pop the fuse in place. And it requires a bit of effort to get it in. These are quite tight, these. I usually do it with a mallet, so I'll be doing that later on. But you can see, there we go, we've got 50 volts there. And down here with my metre probe on there, 49.8. So as you can see, there's a little bit of calibration required still. So that's how we prime, if you like, those capacitors, pre-charge them safely without any arc welding. And just in case you're wondering what happens if you do it some other way, in my toolbox here there should be a little green screwdriver that I used earlier. There we go. And you'll notice there's a little bit missing. Okay, and you can guess how that happened. Muggins used that just to see how much current would happen 
and yeah there was a bit of arc welding to remove some of that uh, that screwdriver blade so that's the safe way to do it